On this episode of the Ask Mike Reinald Show, we talk about set and rep schemes and whether or not three sets of 10 is bad. The Ask Mike Reinald Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I am joined by the physical therapy and strength and conditioning crew here at Champion PT and Performance. We got Dwesh Cordell, Dave Tilly, Lisa Russell, Diane Pope, Mike Scaduto, Lenny Macrina, answering all your questions. Do you think people realize that every fourth episode we tend to go faster? <laughs> do you think people are seeing our recipe that we try to you know, record for at once and then we end up running out of time but no no we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna spend a lot of time on this one but we are here answering your questions lenny do we briefly have any students because we, it's the fourth episode <laughs> yeah we we, we 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 actually do we have ray stotzer who is the lead student for this question uh from uab in birmingham we have Eric King, who is the, uh, the, the senior student of the back with Johnny Herrera, who's also a senior student. So Eric is from uh, Franklin Pierce and, Re- and, and uh, Johnny is from Regis University in beautiful Colorado. And just officially, it is, it is Sweet Baby Ray Ray. Uh, Sweet Johnny, Baby Ray Ray. Johnny Bag of Donuts <laughs> and Eric, not Jen King. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. I, I, Eric, didn't, lo- see, I bet Eric loves that. <laughs> I think we go. I think we go back into the student nicknames. We just be careful to not insult them too much. But I think we should <laughs> go back to that down the road. So, uh, Ray Ray, what do we got, sweet baby Ray Ray? Do we have a question today? I believe that we do. We have. <laughs> we have Zach. Oh, good, because I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> we got Zach from Tennessee. What's up, everyone? Do you think the stereotypical three sets of 10 can be bad for a patient and even more bad for our profession as a whole? I understand that dosing is always dependent upon whether you want to target strength, endurance, power, etc. But the number 10 seems to be in that middle ground of is it for strength or is it for muscular endurance? Do you think three sets of 10 is ever appropriate or do you think that there could be more specificity and intent behind dosing for PT? All right, I'm hesitant to start this one wow. off, but uh, all right. So, <clears throat> Zach, let's talk. Let's talk. Um, and this isn't Zach's, right? This is a good question from Zach here. That, so, I think it's a really good question about sets and reps and dosing. I want to get Duesh's opinion here on some of the strategies that we use with with set and rep schemes and stuff like that. But I, can I can I just comment first on you know. Do you think three sets of 10 can be bad for the patient or even more bad for our profession? If you do three sets of 10, <laughs> physical therapy will end the world. Um, <laughs> just super dramatic. I, this is like a super dramatic thought process. And look, it's not your fault. This is like, I almost feel like on social media right now, this is almost like reverse fear mongering or shame mongering, right? Is that a phrase? If not, it should be uh but like i it, it's almost like you know people are 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 shaming people into thought processes right into into thinking these sorts of things but like man are we getting this worked up that three sets of 10 is putting our profession behind like to me that just that's that seems very over dramatic as to some statements that i think people are probably making on social media that i think are really confusing students and new grads if this is the thought process that we're we're doing damage to our profession by doing three sets of 10. If you do nine, we'll survive. If you do 10, we'll all die, 
right? That's how like you have to kind of like think of it that that concept. So so Zach, I'm not trying to be like down on you. It's not your fault a little bit here, but it's it's I see this. This is the shaming that's going on on social media about some of these things when there's always some appropriate ways to do things. So I want to get some of the other PTs' opinions on here because you know I'm clearly uh, you, I, I guess you know my opinion, right? But I want to get to some of the other uh, PTs' thought on that concept. But first, let's let's answer a little bit. So Duesh, tell me a little bit about some of our methodology in the gym with set and rep schemes and he's talking about strength endurance power you know this always cracks me up as if like 10 you're only getting strength but then 12 you're magically getting endurance in the muscle right like that Mm -hmm. cracks me up it's just like two you know two kind of reps but tell us a little about set rep schemes and some of the concepts behind them and how we manipulate them in champion yeah so i think zach obviously laid out like the different uh, realms that you can start targeting if you're if you're doing these rep and set schemes right so i think in like school you kind of learn that three sets of eight to 10 is like hypertrophy and like three sets of five is strength, three sets of three or five sets of three is power, right? But we got to realize that it's all in this like sliding scale, right? You're going to get power to some degree by doing three sets of 10, right? You're going to get hypertrophy by doing five sets of three, right? So there, there's this like big sliding scale that we got to keep in mind that it's not so black and white, right? So I think I would start with that. Um, as far as how I kind of dictate my programming and my long-term progressions um, or periodization, um, I look at my inverse relationship between volume intensity, right? And then obviously some of the other factors such as frequency, um, you know, tempo, stuff like that, uh, time under tension, all that stuff kind of comes into play. But I would say a good program gives you um, the wide variety of maybe three sets of 10, three sets of five, five sets of three, three sets to 15, right? It all kind of depends on what you're trying to target in that specific time frame of your program, right? So we typically break up our programming um, into four to six week blocks, right? If you're doing three sets of 10 every single month of training, you're not going to get better, right? You're inducing the exact same response every single month. But now if you go three sets of 10, let's say on a front squat one program, right? You kind of hammer that realm for a little bit. And then you transition to something that's a little bit more higher intensity, right? Meaning more weight on the bar. And maybe we try to go for four sets of five to induce a different response, right? You're probably going to have better outcomes for, for strength, um, for stability, whatever, whatever it is that you're trying to build. So just keep in mind that it's all on this big sliding scale and don't be stuck in this big black and white kind of thing saying three sets of eight always gets hypertrophy. Um, three sets of five always gets strength, right? So be, be willing to kind of change your programming. Um, on a phase by phase basis to get what you want out of it. And, and you know what I really love about what you said there too, Duesh, too, is that it's, it's, I don't, I, I think this is some of the issues again that we've gotten in trouble with our profession is that. I, I'm one of the people that says we can't do three sets of 10 for forever. I just recorded a presentation for APTA CSM that's going to be virtual this year. And that was one of my slides is we can't do three sets of 10 forever. But that's a very important point i said forever right you you can do three sets of 10 right like you can definitely do three sets of 10 we just can't do it forever because we have to challenge the body we have to challenge the tissue but there's often a reason why we we select that set rep scheme that has to do with like tissue capacity and their ability to do some of that stuff i'd actually love to hear like maybe dan or dave or something talk about some of the those sorts of things because there's a i mean you have somebody with an acute injury we're not doing uh you know five sets of three right like because that would imply that you need you can, the tissue can handle maximal load and oftentimes we're not ready for that so i kind of love to hear your thoughts on that but mike what do you got oh man i was just gonna say i think i think duesh had a great answer there and you touched on it but you you can do three sets of 10 and, and i think it this goes back to we have to look at the training age of the athlete or if they're injured kind of where they are in the injury spectrum you can do three sets of 10 for a pretty long time and just literally linearly load them um, with weight and i think they can still get a lot better if we have someone who's relatively young and has never trained before um, if they're working at three sets of 10 and we can linearly load them for months, just add weight and they're going to continue to get stronger. So I would say, um, you definitely can do three sets of 10 for quite some time and still see some progress. I like it, Dave, what do you, th- or Duesh, did you have a, a follow up on that? Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm going to let the other PTs go real quick too, but, um, just to kind of build on Mike's spikes, I think, I think that this is pretty important. Um, I think training age is a huge, huge factor that we got to keep in mind, right? And Mike touched on this real quick, but I, I just want to quickly say, like, a lot of times for my younger athletes or people that haven't been training super, super long, I'm probably not taking them to sets of three or four, right? Because they're 
their baseline strength and their baseline ability to handle forces is just not quite there. So I'm typically keeping them in three sets of 10, three sets of eight, maybe bring them down to sixes. Um, but that's typically my, my stopping point. Then I'll just kind of recycle and then go back up to maybe 12, 10, eight, something like that. But I just wanted to quickly throw that out there that not everyone is three sets of 10, but not everyone is also three sets of three eventually, you know? So. Yeah, absolutely. I would say, and maybe we're talking about younger athletes or junior athletes. I don't think a lot of times they, they don't have the intent to do uh, five sets of three because they don't understand that the level that they're supposed to be working at, like what, what an RPE scale is or whatever we're using reps and reserve. They just don't understand that. Um, so I think they don't get a whole lot out of working maybe in that lower, um, lower rep scheme. Cause they, they just don't know how to load it up appropriately. Yeah. Um, I've definitely seen people like, like finish up their fifth or sixth, like rep when you're trying to do like a heavy load and they're like not even challenged. And you're like, Hey, we, we're not doing the right load here. You don't have the right intent here. But I, I, I hope just even for at this point in the episode, Zach, that you realize here that set set rep schemes are fairly complicated, right? Like, I mean, do just gave you like a, uh, like a whole, like, like, like a day's course worth of set and rep scheme concepts, like in, in a five quick minute, like answer right there, but you see how complicated it is. Like, and there's, there's no wrong answers, right? There's just different ways to do it. But um, I don't know. Does any of the PTs, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I see Dave raising his hand. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on tissue capacity yeah. and the ability to load. Like, because I think that's, I think that's why PT got in a rut of three sets of 10 a little bit. It was for a reason, but what do you think, Dave? Yeah, I think, I mean, that's like the biggest glaring thing here. I think we're all kind of dancing around it, but like the the type of stimulus and the athlete or the person you have in front of you who is rehabbing and has a, a limitation in tissue capacity is very different than the person that Dewey sees who has someone like a performance or an athletic quality bottleneck, right? Like we're dealing with people who we're really the lowest common denominator is like a ligaments capacity to, to tolerate load for pain or like someone's tolerance to like loading for low back or something like that. So like when we do like isometrics are a perfect example, like three sets of 10 of isometrics, you could do that every day, maybe twice a day, because it's not really hard at all on the tissue. It's very, very low stress. But you also you couldn't do three sets of 10, you know, like loaded dumbbell movements, because maybe that's going to be too much on the tissue. And I think oftentimes we don't know really about where the proper like dosage comes on the strength conditioning applications research to physical therapy because of tissue limits. And I've talked to like Tim Gabbett about this, but like, we don't really know where the workload science falls on what's the ligament going to handle versus what a human can handle. So I think that's important. And I always like try to teach the students, like when you look at the programs that we write for physical therapy, like in the gym, they look completely different than what Dewey would do with a baseline template. It's like pretty much all targeted at the tissue, right? It's like, I'm trying to do as much different types of low back loading and different vectors as I can do and hopping and jumping. I'm just stressing someone's back as much as I can versus like in a program that it's very, very widespread with the different qualities they're trying to approach. So I think you can't just copy paste strength conditioning literature hundred percent on um, physical therapy because there's a lot of different factors that go into tissue quality. What's up, Dan? I thought that was really good. Uh, one last thing I will say is that if you start looking through the literature that we have on certain pathologies and how you rehabilitate it, uh, oftentimes they use three sets of 10. And when I'm developing a rehab protocol, I usually look at some of the literature to see what previously exists to help these folks. And then you can apply that as a bit of a template and then just try to manipulate different variables you need to, the reps, the loads, whatever it is, to match where that person is. But I'll use three sets of 10 as a baseline if that's what the medical literature has shown to be effective for a certain type of pathology. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, that makes sense. I like it. What do you got, Lisa? Um, just thinking through, I mean, a lot of the like masters athletes I work with, right? Like the, I don't know, 40 plus athletes. Um, nice Lenny, we're masters. <laughs> <laughs> like <that. laughs> um, you know, like convincing them to find a time in their day to actually do strength work, like PT level, like, you know, muscle activation, like actually get your glutes to function kind of like strength work at home. Like the amount of equipment they have or the, you know, like load that they can place on themselves at home. Like I'm not going to doing like a lower than three by 10 doesn't make any sense. Right. Like they're not going to get any kind of change. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's where it, like for the, that kind of group of people, I feel like I'm usually like, depending on how much resistance you can give yourself, like do 10, do 15, like you're trying to make your muscle tired. You're trying to feel something by the end of it and not necessarily just like you have to do three sets of 10 and that's all you're going to do. Um, but I mean, yeah, that, and I feel like that's, you know, that's not the like high school, college athlete, like high performance athlete, right? That's like, 
your everyday active person. Um, I like that. And, you know, it's kind of funny too. Like, so Nick Esposito and I were just talking about this. One of our strength coaches, a champion, we're, we're, you know, modifying some of our programs for home workouts, right? Just like assuming that people don't have a lot of equipment, a lot of weight. Right. And, and one of the things you do is you, you increase your, your reps, right? You increase your reps if you don't have as much load. Like, so if we're trying to get to failure or nail near failure or something like that, it's, it's, it's about, it's about load plus reps. And that's, kind of the concept of why blood flow restriction training helps to an extent too is that is that you get to failure faster or easier or whatever that, however you want to say it so kind of keep that in mind as well so um so look lots of good stuff zach i mean again sorry i mean i i think conceptually here their set and rep schemes are are complicated but it's super important for us to understand so we can manipulate to, to benefit the people as best as we can um i think i want to end it with this i think it's this isn't about zach this is about everybody else that's on social media if you're educating through negativity and what people are doing wrong and that's your education style on instagram and stuff like that i think you're the one doing a disservice to our profession right so you get people like zach wondering if he does three sets of ten if all of a sudden he's shamed our entire Entire profession right that's because of the stuff we're seeing on social media so you know just call to action man can we please educate on what we're doing and the things that we we think we should do and not the things we think we shouldn't do right and i know that's just a mindset type thing but let's focus on the positive things that we can do because your social media posts your words man they they impact people especially students and new grads that are younger than you that are just learning here we got to be really careful what we say we see so much conflict so many people that are just so confused as to what to do it's because some of these messages on social media so please 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 stop telling people that three sets of ten is bad for our profession right because that's absurd that concept's absurd and we shouldn't be saying stuff like that like so you know a little off tangent if you got to this point in the episode you probably still like me and us so um that you're, or you're probably you probably agree with us to an extent right here but like seriously i just think that's super important for our profession right now i just want to see more positivity with our educational style so um anyway sorry my bad. But anyway, awesome. Good question, Zach. Thank you for stimulating us. That was awesome. We appreciate it. If you have more questions like that, we're here to answer sincerely and authentically, like, you know, based on our research and experience that we've been through. So hopefully we can help you as well. If you have a question, head to MikeRonald.com, click on the podcast link, fill out the form to ask a question. Hopefully you guys still listen to us after us just getting uh, these answers in right here. You still enjoy us. If you do, please, we read them. Like, give us a, re a review, rate us on iTunes and Spotify so we can make this even better and we will see you on the next episode thanks